our next guest. Uh-oh. He's on the Financial Services Committee. Uh, he questioned uh, Robin Hood founder Vlad Tenev about what he calls the democratization of financial addiction. Uh, my first question for the CEO of Robinhood, how much of your revenue comes from payment for order flow? I don't recall the exact percentage. Uh, it's over 50%. I worry that the real world impact of Robinhood is the democratization of financial addiction. You know, Robinhood has gaming features that seem to manipulate retail traders. There's one feature in particular that encourages retail investors to tap on the Robinhood app up to a thousand times a day. Do you share my concern that a retail trader tapping on a Robinhood app a thousand times a day is a sign of addiction? Join us now is freshman Congressman Richie Torres. Uh, it's great to have you on the, the, the show, Congressman. And uh, I, I guess my first question is you went in to the hearings wanting to know certain things. Uh, when you left, do you feel like you uh, found out what you went there to find out? Or, or do, are you still, do you have additional uh, questions about what happened? Look, the plumbing of the stock market is enormously complicated, so I have additional questions. But the purpose of the hearing was to go beyond the sensational David versus Goliath narrative and establish what are the facts, what are the larger policy questions surrounding the GameStop short squeeze. Members had questions about execution quality and payment for order flow and gamification and clearing houses. And, you know, for the first time, the CEO of Robinhood confirmed, as your previous clip showed, that, that Robinhood did not have sufficient liquidity to meet the original $3 billion margin call. Um, and that was the first time that he had acknowledged as much in a public hearing. So it's important for Congress to get these financial players to answer questions under oath and to answer them as honestly and as forthrightly as possible. That's true, uh, Congressman. And it, it's especially true that in hindsight, that is not a good position to be in. A and maybe we, to some extent, you know, dodged the bullet. And we've, I've had, we've had some people come on the show and said it could have been a, a complete disaster uh, that day. We've had other people come on and say that the markets worked well. Um, but once again, in hindsight, we now realize they need a lot more capital uh, if they're going to play in this, in, in this business the way that they play. So, I mean, at least that's a positive, right? Uh, exactly. Look, if it, the state admission of Robinhood is to democratization of finance. You have to ensure that your company is sufficiently capitalized uh, to live up to your state admission. But the company, in my opinion, has been poorly served by the uh, mixed and muddled messaging from the CEO. There was an interview, uh, a CNBC interview, in which he famously said that the company had no liquidity problem. And I thought that misstatement only served to contribute toward the swirl of conspiracy theories and misinformation that took held that took hold in the immediate aftermath of the trading restrictions. Congressman, it, it is arcane, and there, there are a lot of, of nuances uh, to Wall Street. Do you think it's fair at this point, the way it's characterized, not necessarily by, by Congress, uh, but or the media or, or elsewhere, but there is a uh, a perception now that it's just not a level playing field. And what, how would you change that? Would it be, it, does it need to be changed internally at the, the companies involved? Or do you think that regulators need to exert more influence over whether the markets are, are fair for everyone? Well, let me be clear that yesterday's hearing was the first of a series of hearings. Uh, there's going to be no rush to regulate for the sake of regulating there's a genuine commitment to fact-finding and understanding. And, and I think we all share the goal of how do we best make the markets more accountable to, more transparent for, and more protective uh, of retail investors. It's unclear to me that retail investors have the information necessary for evaluating which brokerage firm offers them uh, the best execution. And I, in yesterday's hearing, I expressed concerns that Payment for order flow does appear to have perverse incentives that conspire against execution quality. That under payment for order flow, there's a perverse incentive for a brokerage firm like Robinhood to send orders to the trading firms that offer them the highest payment rather than offer the retail investors 
the best execution. That strikes me as a legitimate concern that we should examine in much greater detail. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.